Oh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to Arsenic Candy Gaming. And welcome to a new game for the channel. And a new game for me. It's a brand new game. It's Ring of Pain. Ring of Pain is a roguelike, dungeon-crawling, card-battling game. There we go. That's a brief explanation. Uh, similar in some ways to Slay the Spire, but different enough that it is definitely worth playing if you have any interest in that sort of thing. I have played ring of pain for about three hours now on stream yesterday uh twitch.tv forward slash arsenic underscore candy if you have any interest i've got the more than a just just the basics of the game um but i have reset my progress so that we can experience the opening of ring of pain together today i'm not gonna preamble too much i'm just gonna get into it there is a little brief tutorial explaining some of the elements of the game and we will get into it as we go so this is our first enemy and we have explained that our damage projections appear on our health bars to show the result of the action what that means is as we hover over hover over it shows us that we're going to do two damage to him and then down in the bottom left on the green bar here it shows that he's going to do one damage to us Seeing combat outcomes means that you can focus on decisions, meaning that you can decide whether or not it was a good idea. This time you'll notice that he is not hitting us. We'll find out more about that in just a moment. That's our first floor down. Let's move on. Here, child. Here we are going to be given a little bit more about our next combatant. So, we've been given a new statistic here, which is speed. Speed is our, essentially, initiative from Dungeons & Dragons or any other RPG, uh, which determines who gets to attack first. The Rot Hound has a speed of 5. We only have a speed of 4. So, he's going to get to attack us first. And what is he going to do with that? If we hover over him, uh, it says that, um, well, it says that he's going to attack first. But you can see that we're going to do 2 damage to him, and down here, he's going to do three damage to us. And uh, if we take a bit more of a look, we can understand why. So our attack is three. So our base attack, our base damage output is three. But we have to remove his defense. So we'll attack for three. His defense will reduce one. We'll do two damage. His returning attack is he does four standard attack versus our two defense so he will do two two attack on us but he also does one piercing damage which pierces through our defense we don't block it and he does one damage there so that totals three damage he'll be doing to us explained good so the diff a, a, a noticeable difference between this attack and the previous one is that we attacked first on the previous opponent so our second attack where we killed him he did not harm us but as this creature's speed is higher than ours he gets to hit us before we return a hit so he will still do his three damage and uh, thankfully we've received a potion to heal and then we meet our i was gonna say friend i'm gonna choose my words carefully guide in the dungeon here uh, there is a bit of a backstory that plays off in Ring of Pain. I haven't uncovered all of it. I've got quite far in the game. I, I've got to some of the later dungeons. I have yet to beat it and yet to discover what the story is, but we will get there. Hello. Oh. And we're just going to step around this gentleman here. And this is where we unlock one of our first cards that we get to keep. So... Uh, unlike Slay the Spire, Slay the Spire plays out uh, where you travel floors and meet enemies and you build a deck of cards to battle those enemies. In Ring of Pain, there are essentially two decks at play. We have... No, the, the, there's the, the deck that we keep in our hand and the deck that is the dungeon. So yeah, two decks at play. We'll go with that. So this is one of our um, item cards, which gives us stats and effects. So this will give us a new, st uh, a new stat that we need to keep an eye on, which is clarity. Um, 
which also affects something else, which is stealth. So we'll pick up our candle. That's give us a new stat, Clarity, which boosts our resource gain and critical hit chance. So it's increased our chances of scoring a critical hit. It's also increased our soul gain bonus. Whenever we attack a monster, uh, whenever we kill a monster, um, we will gain currency, which is souls, which we can spend on treasure in either merchant shops or on mimic chests, which we can unlock by giving them our souls. Uh, it also, uh, the clarity also increases our heal bonus that we get from any potions that we consume. And also our curse resistance. Curse is something that we'll experience in the next room. And this is our first true floor of our dungeon. And would you believe it, we are faced with two mimics on our first floor. So in the left mimic, we have a choice between some of our potential stat increases. So this bandana will give us a plus one attack and a plus two speed, meaning we've got a great increased chance of attacking first and a better chance of doing more damage. It will also give us a plus four attack when we are below 25% health. That's a, an incredible bonus if you are happy to be fighting at three health at this point. Oh, we'd have to be at two health to be below 25%. Or Crystalline, which gives us increased defense, increased health, and it also gives us splash damage, meaning it will attack the opponents to either side of any that we hit. We're going to go with the increased attack damage, I think. Here is a new thing that we need to learn about. Some creatures trigger a death effect when killed. So up here we have our death effect explode. When we kill this opponent, he will explode, damaging cards on either side of him. Passing a hostile creature needs stealth. That was another um, thing that we earned from our clarity. So to the sides of any cards that we've got here, uh, this one's not really relevant. We could just walk past this one. But here we have stealth. We can stealth around this creature and we have a chance of um, getting by without being noticed. We also have a chance of um, alerting him to our presence and him attacking us. It says down on our health bar there, there's a 25% chance that he will do one piercing damage to us. So this is a good um, time to talk about the way that our dungeon is laid out. Uh, in Ring of Pain, other than the cards that we pick up, uh, the cards constitute the dungeon floors that we have entered. So in front of us, uh, essentially like we, we've we entered the floor and then there are two corridors to, to choose from. One that turns left, one that goes right, but they loop around on themselves. So as we walk in, we look to our right and there's a chest and to our left is this monster. So we could walk headlong into that battle or we can explore some of the dungeon behind him. So we have been given access we can view all of the things that are on our dungeon floor but uh to what extent we can view them is uh, is limited so we can see that this card here is a stat card the card behind it is a potion card and then these cards are hostile cards but we don't get to see what they are there are ways that you can enter a dungeon and immediately see what everything is but we we don't have that yet so let's open our second mimic card so we've got Nightshade Wrap, which gives us a plus five stealth. Fairly easy to understand. It will, however, reduce our defense, but it will increase our speed and our clarity. I don't like a reduced defense. Uh, reduced defense uh, means that we're going to take some heavy damage. I don't actually want either of those. On um, item pickups, you get the option of, if if you uh, feel like it, re-rolling the set of items you've been given, but that will cost you some of your souls. That has just given us quite a good one. Okay, Hermit's Tiara is one of my favorite items early game. Um, it gives you plus one uh, defense, a plus three clarity, but it also has a residual effect, which is it freezes creatures in front of us so um what in, in, as you can read there it freezes both their actions and their death effects so for instance if we were met by two monsters in front of us 
and one of them was an exploding creature and we attacked it, it would immediately freeze and we would not be attacked by its explosion. And once we hit them again, then they unfreeze. We're going to take that one. Uh, so that's given us increased defense and increased clarity. Now we have a stat card, which will boost our attack by one. This one is a potion, which will increase our health, but we don't need to do that. So now we can play out our freeze attack on this guy. It froze him. Um, if we remember up in the top, it said death effect freeze. If we had not frozen him, he would have exploded on death and caused us an amount of damage. This guy is faster than us, so he gets to attack first, but we're going to sidestep around him and go this way. Now, we could try and sneak past this rat, but we have a higher attack speed than him. So we can do three damage, but he is not doing any, any damage to us. Why not? So we're going to hit him for three. It's not currently telling us that he's going to do any damage to us because we're going to freeze him is why. So he did not get to hurt us. And then we get to take our second go. Uh, same will happen with this gentleman because they're exactly the same. Then we'll just get through all of these rattlings as quickly as possible. And then we might as well take out this dude. He is... Because he gets to attack us first, he's going to do two damage to us before we hit him. Which is going to freeze him. And then we get to finish him off. And then we can heal. And then we can exit our dungeon. <laughs> I have recorded this video three times already and messed it up um but there you go we'll get through it this is a weapon item which will give us a um an effect on our attacks which deals poison damage uh i hate i, I hate doing this <laughs> uh, i'm gonna stop referring to other card games but much the same as the um poison from slay the spire we can attack somebody, apply two poison to them, and then it will reduce each turn. There we go. That'll be the, hopefully the last Slay the Spire reference we make. But it will reduce our attack by one. Mm. It might be worth it. So we'll give it a go. We'll increase our speed, which means we get to attack first more often. So we've met a new hostile here, which is the Restled, Restless Triad. Uh, a lovely three-headed gentleman here. So what have we got here? We have got... He does six physical damage to us. We will only block three of that physical damage. So he will still do three physical damage. But he also has... Two uh, piercing damage, which we won't block. So he'll do five damage every time he hits us. So we want to avoid him for as long as possible. Hoping that we can get an alternate... Uh, an alternative option so let's freeze this this lad and move on here is a new um action that we need to be aware of so this creature will prefer perform an action after each turn an important thing to know about the dungeons in ring of pain is that they they they're or every card of the dungeon is in play during every turn so if i were to take an action here these cards that are hostile back here still take their moves so uh, we did an action here and this card moved forward what we can do however is move away from this gentleman and we will trigger his explode effect by sneaking past this lad he spotted us he attacked us but that's okay we sneak past again and our, our little gelatinous friend there exploded. Uh, that saved us taking what would potentially have been six damage from killing him in our face. So that's great. Uh, we can increase our shield here. This gentleman explodes when we kill him. But because we freeze him, he is not going to explode in our face. Um, this this lad will still do six uh, five damage if we hit him head on so we want to avoid that if we can we'll risk it this time around though because we can kill him with our freeze here's a new item that we need to be aware of spells much like scrolls in an rpg spells are one-off attacks that will be uh used upon 
um, casting. This one is Bear Trap. It will ensnare, uh, meaning that the opponent can't move or um, it can't come any closer to you. Uh, and it will immediately deal 15 damage. So I think it freezes him in place for a turn. So you can ensnare him and then move away if you need to. Uh, there is um, also um, a, another type of spell here, which hopefully we'll find soon. Shrouded Leather will give us plus one attack, plus one defense, plus one health. Definitely. Here is one of the first paid for um, Mimic chests that we've encountered. So this chest to open will cost us 20 souls and we may as well do it. So our options here are trade in our Shrouded Leather for a Ritual Garment, which will deal random uh, deal one damage to a random creature when hit doesn't have to necessarily be the one in front of us it will trade off the one attack that we've already got for one attack so no increase there it'll increase our clarity by four we'll lose our defense and we'll lose two health doesn't seem like a good deal to me however visionary is an item that will reveal will give us plus one health plus two clarity and reveal all cards on every floor so now whenever we enter a floor, none of those cards in the background will be a mystery to us. If we attack this lad, he's going to do three damage to us because we now have increased our defense to block a lot more of his attack. So he's only going to do three attacks to us and we'll freeze him. Oh, we won't freeze him. Um, what was interesting to note about the tiara is that uh, the, we would have frozen him with our attack, but we have now got more than five items equipped one two three four five six so um we no longer freeze him on attack so he gets an opportunity to hit us a second time but we've got a heal and now we have a mystery corridor these are your standard exits from your dungeon which will just take you on to the next assigned level of your dungeon these are mystery floors uncharted territory this takes us to an area called the reprieve there will be obviously spoilers doing a let's play of ring of pain but i have to make the assumption that if you've watched this far the spoilers aren't really a problem for you um this is our guide definitely not our friend in the uh, ring of pain i'm holding my mouse in a very specific way because on the pre previous one what run or recording that I tried to do whilst explaining who this gentleman was I accidentally clicked and attacked him and as you can see he has a very high health oh who are you I have many names from which to choose Al might be the best to use okay then not only does he have a very high health bar he also does 21 attack which would kill us instantly he has six piercing which would pretty much kill us instantly. He defends all of our attack and he has a massively high speed. So no matter what we do, he's going to defeat us. There might be a way to defeat him if we feel the need to. I don't know. I haven't got that far yet. Here's a new card that we need to learn of. Potions. Uh, this potion is a chance to heal or curse. So in the bottom left, you can see um, we have... An opportunity, 44% chance that it will take 6 health away from us. And we have a 56% chance that it will give us 6 health. It took some health from us. But that's no problem because we have these health cards here. Reprieve is a flaw that comes up regularly. And you can recognize it uh, by the little symbol that will appear from it on dungeons. Where you know that you can always come to that floor to get some health if that door pops up on your dungeon. Okay, now because of our visionary, we can see all the creatures that are in this dungeon, which allows us to make some decisions about which way we go. This bead will move towards us on his next turn. So if we move away from him, we can hopefully drag him towards us. So what will we do? Um, I quite would like to ensnare somebody with that because it's a very useful trap. So... Hopefully this gentleman, this, this guy will follow us. So if we move, he'll follow. On his next move, he's going to move and prepare to self-destruct. So we'll move away. And then if we ensnare... Oh, we can actually... If we try and get past this, this gentleman, who is the scrounger. So the scrounger has 10 health. 
He will attack for three, which we would defend. But he has two piercing damage, which would cause... A... Oh, okay. So here, here's a, an interesting thing that we need to learn. So he has physical damage, which will be countered by our five defense. But he has two piercing damage, which... Um, If our defense is equal to both his attack and um, piercing, so five and uh, his total is five, he will pierce through our defense and hurt us. If we had six shield, we would def have greater than his combined attack, and we would also parry the the piercing damage. It's very convoluted. It's very complicated uh, and difficult to uh, understand if you're not playing through it. Um, so yeah, and if we attack him, we will he will block three of it. But we don't want to do that because, as we can see down here, if we do attack him, this guy will explode and cause us four damage. So what we need to do is move out of the way of that explosion. That explosion caused four damage to him instead, and now we can take our move. If we attack him, we'll do. A combined three damage with our attack and our poison and then he's run away what we do need to be wary of is that this this scrounger he likes to steal loot so he will move at, if we don't kill him he will move towards the exit taking the loot with him so we finish him off and we've now got a plus one shield and a plus one clarity and uh, a heal potion which we don't currently need to use so let's have a look who we've got over here just trying to determine what might be the best way to go this way so we have a rot hound a rot hound has five speed we get to go first he attacks for five which we we hopefully should be able to parry hmm, we don't for some reason oh okay so because our block is greater than his attack and his piercing we have a 25 percent chance of parrying his attack which we did and the same goes for this guy he managed to land the hit on us uh, as we move around here we're going to come up against one of those triple headed terrors which we will be able to do four damage on but he gets to hit first we parried his attack because our block is not greater than his. I don't know how we parried that. How did we parry that? I don't know. Not going to argue, though. Uh, so we have a speed increase there. We're going to heal up, and then we're going to take on this guy. We get to attack first. He explodes after we hit him. We take six damage, but we do have a dungeon full of meds that we can utilize. Um, it's a shame that we don't get to use this. Uh, we Actually, see so what we can do with this scroll is we can use it and we would change one of our health into a permanent defense increase. It's a good trade-off, but it means that we would have to dispose our bear trap. Dispose of our bear trap. Oh, I think we'll do it anyway. And then we'll use it immediately to utilize it. Now we have two new paths in front of us. The purple dungeon and the green dungeon. I'm going to get the purple dungeon today. This is an ambush. So we weren't expecting this. We've been attacked by many, many opponents here. So we have two rot hounds here. Hopefully we should be able to parry this attack. We parried that attack. He did zero damage. We killed him. We should be able to do the same with this one. We were attacked. That. Gnawling. Um, attacked us, but I think we defended it anyway, didn't we? We parried that attack. And then... We got through it. Okay. Took a bit of damage, but there you go. These are new for me no i have seen both of these before so this one uh every attack we do we will drain the creature's defense by three damage every time we hit them and it will also increase our defense by two and our health by one 
This one will increase our health by four and our clarity by four. That's great. I really like that. I, but I do like draining a creature's defense. And if we come up against some particularly da uh, dangerous enemies, that one would be extremely beneficial for us. But then a massive health bar is also good. Tough call. I'm just going with the I'm going with the dog gloves. Oh, a visitor. This is the creepy, creepy shopkeeper. He is terrifying, but I love him. So in this merchant here, we get to choose between either healing up for up to 15 health for free, or we can spend some of our souls on a stat increase or a potential cure slash stat increase so that one will potentially give us a random stat increase but it might also do six health damage or a definite one attack increase we'll go for the one because we've got some spare souls i am dragging this dungeon out a little bit longer than i need to like i said uh like a, a run of stay the spire can take a couple of hours a run of ring of pain you can be done in about 20 minutes, um, but we are dragging this out so that we can explain some of it on uh, if, you know, if it's popular and we want to play some more videos of it, we can get through a, a, quite a few runs of Ring of Pain in a single video, I would imagine. Right, let's mosey on. So you're not going to follow us. We don't have enough souls to purchase you, so we can take on this little rat and we will immediately kill him. No problem. This guy will follow us, so we can either take him to to uh, this direction so that he destroys this bad guy, or we can try and pull him back towards that one, but I think we should make him come with us because now he's going to explode. He's going to do six damage, and then we can take him out very easily. This one's also going to follow us, and if we drag him with us, we can get him to take a huge amount of damage on the looter. What's this do? We can attack the looter, but he is going to move towards the exit. I assume that he's going to go straight through. Oh, no. We got him. So we get a clarity increase, health increase, stat increase. And we, we can battle a snack. So the snakes... Snakes inflict us with poison damage. It doesn't say it anywhere on their card, but in the, in the left down here on our health bar, it shows it will cause us three poison, and it will do... Uh, well, it will completely parry any of his regular attack. Poison, I think, only lasts for the floor that you're on, but it does... It will do three damage, and then it will do two damage on our next turn, and then it will do one damage, and then it will dissipate. Um, however, I think he'll get to attack us twice if we let him so we're going to avoid that just for the moment um we'll take out this explodey dude we will fight the snake and then we will heal nullifying any poison uh we've got a choice of two chests or we can move on i think we'll skip the chest this time and we'll go to this mystery floor the new path we come to a weird um, cosmic room indeed. Hello. Listen closely. Can't talk long. Sirens watch. Beware their song. This is the overarching mystery of the dungeon that is still completely eluding me, but I'm sure we'll come to some uh, knowledge of it eventually. So, uh, we would probably like to drag this explodey boy towards us we can possibly drag two of them with us he's come in we can get him to take out this his friend over there and then we can move back we can increase our defense this is a wretched amalgam he hits hard so he has 10 speed He's definitely going to get to go first. He has 10 defense, nullifying our attack completely. He does 14 damage. Doing... 
Oh, oh yeah, he does 14 damage and two piercing. So he will do eight damage every time he attacks us. However, we have Shadow Step, which guarantees that we get to stealth past any hostiles uh, uh, unfettered um, for at least three turns. So we should move away from him <laughs> and uh, take on the explosion instead. We're going to move away. We are going to utilize that for the next time, just for our next three attempts at stealth to be successful. We're going to try and move away from him and not get killed. Uh, which worked out. So we're going to grab that chest. This gives us either a jar, which is a dissipating um, item. So it's, it's usually a draw, jar of vegetables or fungus or something like that. Uh, in, this, in this case, it's ginseng, which will give us plus one defense stat on dungeon exit. So for three dungeons that we exit, we will increase our shield stat by one, and then all three uses will be used up. Here we have a similar uh, a spell similar to our scroll, but this is a grimoire. And what this will do is it will... Um, this one will destroy any gem that we have equipped. We will gain its stats, but we will lose the gem. That's unusual. I like that. We might have to take that. And um, the difference between scrolls and grimoires is that the spell books is that these are cooldowns. So once we've used this for every one turn of combat we have, it will uh, regenerate and we'll be able to use it again. We currently don't have any gems, but it is fantastic. I've not, I've not encountered that spell book before. I'm definitely going to give it a go. So we're going to exit this dungeon before that guy attacks us. Um, that gave us some information that an item was about to appear. Um, so what we would like to do, I think, these guys are going to move towards us on their next turn. So what we want to do is drag one of them with us, and we want it to attack this guy here. Um, so who have we got here? He is a Whisperer. He attacks for seven, which we would block. But... If we were to attack him, the explosion of that guy would do us four damage. He has 14 shields, so we're not going to do a lot of damage to him anyway. But our poison would definitely do a lot of damage to him. So we're going to move past, let our explosion take him out. His explosion also took out the other exploder. We have another enemy here, which is... Um, I can't remember his name, but he has a projectile attack. So he can fire his projectile over three cards and hit us. And that is what he is doing. Um, I think we should move on and try and get our spitty friend before he does too much damage to us. So he has very low defense and very low speed. Uh, and we'll kill him with no trouble whatsoever. Um, it might be worth... Do we have a hostile in range? No, this guy's going to move and prepare to self-destruct. So he's going to move towards us. If we move on again, we can get him to do damage to this spiky boy. Oh, it didn't work. So the spiky boy is a spine back. He has six defense. We have six attack. He has six speed. We have eight speed. He does nine attack in total, which we do not block. But vulnerable. I don't really know what the vulnerable... Ah, this is his vulnerable state. I believe. So. Our speed is higher. We will attack for three. He'll attack for two piercing, I believe. Yes. And we kill him. No problem. Not as scary as I first imagined. This is a... Uh, like a gelatinous cube, I guess. A blob. A viscid one. He has no defense. Much higher speed. Uh, so he gets to attack us first. And I think he does poison damage. Yeah, he's going to do one poison damage on us. So we have a, a chance of becoming cursed if we take that. Which we did not. We did not get cursed. The Whisperer. He gets to go... After us, I thought you went before us. I was mistaken. Now we have two more tunnel options. Um, this 
this one seems the more inviting at the moment. A careful maneuver. Okay. So what do we have in front of us? We have some scary looking stuff going on over here. Uh, we have some new cards which will will cross when we get to them. So let's take this stat. Let's see what this is. A mimic friend. Dungeon items will all spawn at the front of the dungeon. I've not encountered this one before, and we're definitely going to take that. That gives us plus four health, plus four clarity, and now all dungeon items will spawn right in front of us at the start of a dungeon rather than us having to maneuver around. We're going to drag this dude with us and hopefully get him to take out this guy. And he did a bit of damage to his mate as well. And we'll do similar again. Get this guy to come with us and explode. This is the new card that we've met in this dungeon, which is Shuffle Prism. It will shuffle all the cards in the dungeon. Um, or it will randomly put us in a place on the dungeon, I believe. So our friend exploded. Then we'll, we'll hit the Shuffle Prism and see what happens. So we just randomly threw some cards around. And again. Um, let's take this guy out if we can. There we go. He dropped some loot for us, which was some heals. We'll take the curse potion. I don't think we need to fully heal. We're good. We, we could battle this guy to get some extra souls. Doesn't seem necessary at the moment. Oh, a visitor. Our second merchant. So we can go for a permanent health increase, a permanent speed increase, or just a heal. We'll go for the speed. You only get one option in a merchant shop, and he will snatch the others away from you immediately. So on this floor, we have three uh, enemies that are going to poison us. We have um, our tri-head person, our spitter. So we want to get him quickly before he spits all over us. I think what we'll do is we'll take a def... Mm. We'll use our defense barrier. And we will take this guy out as quickly as we can. He is going to move and prepare to self-destruct. So if we move past the snake, we got past. He exploded. Poisoned the snake. And if we move away from the snake, maybe? He's just going to die anyway, so that's fine. Let's increase our shield. I'd like to take out this snake to get some extra life. It worked out fine. We will heal to get rid of the poison. I don't want to spend my shells, uh, my, my shells, my souls, because I'd like to get a nice expensive chest. So we're going to go through our mystery dungeon here. It's probably another ambush. A crossroads. We come to the crossroads. Merely a path where we get many choices. Now we could go to a definite ambush, which will be full of hostiles, but we'll, you know, we'll definitely have a load of treasure. Or we can go down one of these mystery roads. This one looks great. It's got lots of little speckles in it. Let's do that one. Companions, a new path. I don't fully understand companions. I know that the music's very sad. And the events, the events that unfurl in a companion room. Well, they, we might have to censor them. I'll be honest. We might have to censor the next couple of minutes. It's essentially a room where we can get... You'd think it was a room to get some new friends. But alas, it's just free money. Let's just... Hi, dog. Oh! Oh! Hand of dog. We petted the dog. <gasps> this is new. Sorry, Froggo. You're not a doggo. Oh. This is a new experience. We can pet the doggos. I assume that that heals us. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, I'm glad I got to share that moment. So, yeah. Uh, normally, it's just a room where you can uh, get a lot of free souls by killing innocent creatures 
but we got to pet the doggies. So we'll add that to can you pet the dog then? Oh, that was lovely. Find us keepers. Our owl friend has brought us a gift. These spiked pants, they will give us two defense. They will reduce our speed by one, but when we get hit, we will reflect two damage back at any creature that attacks us. I think we'll put those on. Okay. So all the treasure is in front of us. We'll go for a speed up. Solidarity. What are we trading out? We're, we're trading out revealing all the cards for some defense and dodge chance. I don't want that. Oh, you're going to explode, so you can bugger off. We'll bring you to... The Wretched Amalgam. Oh, you... We'll just, we'll just take you out quickly. Um, oh, Spitty Boy's coming at us. Oh, he's going to split when we kill him. So we don't want that to happen. Can we sneak past this snake, or can we just take him out? We're going to need to get healed quickly here. good um he's gonna split in two when we kill him or we can just avoid fighting him and we can leave the dungeon we'll go for a crossroads again and we will take the dark cracked path instability oh Oh my goodness. Mistakes may have been made here. So we have a scroll here that is great um, for dangerous situations like this where we can create a random exit card. This one will double our gain from the next three stat boosts we get. So the next three stat boost cards we get will get double the amount of... Um, uh, geez. I've not encountered this guy before. We'll get double the amount of boost from it. He's going to stomp. I don't know what that entails. I don't know if he's going to hurt us. Stacked plate. That gives us one third of our defense extra, which is only two, but it reduces our speed by four. But it gives us eight increase in health. Oh my goodness. We're going to lose some attack. Oh yeah, because we're trading out. So we'll also lose, yeah, we'll lose a bunch of shield, lose a bunch of speed. I don't think we need to do that. So we'll move on. We'll take out this guy. So that stompy guy there has hurt everybody in the dungeon with his stomp. Um, can we sneak past you? We snuck past you. We'll kill that guy because we need that. We'll get some stat boost increases. Wow. That's very beneficial. Thank you very much. Oh, this guy's terrifying. The Phase Fiend. So he does a huge amount of damage. But we'll kill him as well. So it's worth it. You. We cannot. We are unable to sneak past this guy. Because he has this blocker on, the, on his right. He also... He's slow. He blocks 8 damage. But he does 10 total damage. We might be able to take him down. No, we will not be able to take him down. So we heal up. And we'll try and sneak past somebody else instead. This guy's going to do a significant amount of damage if he hits us. But we can take him out as well. We should be able to sneak past this guy with little recourse. Um, hmm, I don't know what happens now. I think there's a shuffler over there. So, well, that is a really, is it really stupid of us not to take this card? We're taking it, sod it. We'll heal, we'll sneak past him. What's he got? We, we, we can't hurt him. He, it, it will just take too long for us to hurt him. So we'll shuffle. We'll take the exit. We'll get out of here before we get killed. Floor 9. The amorphous mass. 
Take half damage from melee attacks. Yeah, we don't want that. 140 chest. Yeah. Right. This is another new armor. That will reduce our health significantly. It will give us plus one temporary defense when hit until we next move. No, don't need that. Oh, I'm going to re-roll it. I'm going to take something different. See what we get. Ascension boots. Minus five attack. Plus two defense. Plus two clarity. But they will deal plus one light damage per four hit. I don't know what that means. I genuinely don't know what the light damage is. Plus four uh, per four health. But it's such a massive reduction in attack. But we are doing a huge amount of damage per health that we've got. Do we risk it? Healing items restore double the amount. Increased attack. Reduced defense. Increased health. Increased clarity. We could go for a full-on healthy build. Might as well now. We've started it. Let's take this boy out. Sit down, sir. Are you going to explode? Okay. What happened there was he exploded. He took out the blob that we had in front of us. Now we need to find a heal quickly. Before it takes us down. Amorphous mass. We don't need that, I'm afraid. Thank you for the offer. I think we'll... Um, get out of here now before something bad happens. I, I genuinely didn't think that this run was going to last quite this long, but there you go. Um, we will take another stat increase. So that will give us two. That's our stat boosts gone. We could fully heal. <clears throat> We could create a random exit dungeon in front of us and then fully heal. Right. Let's take this curse. What have you got going on? You've got 15 speed. You're going to be higher than us in speed. You've got piss poor defense. But he intimidates. Prevents retaliation of attacking first in combat. He attacks first and we don't get to retaliate. Uh, not into that. So he's moving and preparing to self-destruct. And if we move past, he's going to do a significant amount of damage to this irritating creature, the Crooked Loon Bird. The Loon Bird gets to attack first. He has high attack and um, piercing and low block. So we can fight back and easily kill him, or we can drag him past this explodey boy. Or we'll just let the Exploder take him out. And... Oh my goodness. There is a lot going on here that we don't want to encounter now. We'll heal. Let's shuffle the dungeon and see what happens. Is he attacking first? He prevents our retaliation, so we don't want that happening. I think it's time for us to leave. I don't think anything good can come from the rest of this dungeon. A quick escape. We have a new item that will appear. I like it. The light. The light is cursed. Reflect on this. The shadow harbors clues you miss. Okay. I think it's all alluding to us taking the darker paths. Um, but I don't know for sure. Okay, what have we got in front of us? Heal to full. Guaranteed stealth success for the next three attempts. Let's drag him towards our loon bird friend. And then drag this guy back. So we're going to heal. And then we're going to drag. So he takes out the loon bird. Take shadow step. 
I mean, do we risk it? We do. Where do we go from here? We can put Shadow Step on, just so that we can sneak past if we need to. The Skulker. He has much higher speed, and he's going to do a significant amount of damage to us. Is there any reason why we go anywhere else? We don't want the 75 chest. We'll get out of here. Companions! You're not a companion. I have a gift on one condition. Quench the thirst. It's your audition. Weakness is a curse as well. Do not worry. I won't tell. Uh, what? Sam, what do you want from me? You want to kill me, don't you, Sam? We stroke all the doggos. I'm not going to fight you, Sam, I'm afraid. See you later, Sam. Okay, delving deeper. We have a stat increase. We have another stat increase. We can drag this guy so that he explodes his explosion all over the guy behind him. Hmm. Slow burn. What's this? It's a mask. Reduces piercing damage taken by one. Don't like it. Some treasure there, but that'll cost us 140. Our exits are here. So let's see if we can drag the loon bird past. He got attacked by our blobular friend, the phase fiend. He's going to do too much damage to me. Um, can we take you out? We did. Let's see if we can blow up any of our blobular friends again. We're going to fight you because I want you dead. We'll fight you anyway. We can take you down. Good, that worked. My goodness. So, what is this? He has a projectile attack. Oh, he's dead anyway. It doesn't matter. We'll take you out as well, Phase Fiend. We cannot hurt you, which sucks. Unless, unless we can drag him. It doesn't work, does it? How much damage would it do? Eight. Do we risk 140 chest? Let's risk it. Oh, nice. So we, that freezes creatures when hit no matter what. Uh, plus two attack, plus four defense, plus two health. Or we can trade in our poison attack for attack targets get randomly teleported sounds great i'm gonna go with the freeze and i'm also gonna gto oh a visitor and we will take we'll go for our clarity increase final form Plus 10 to, 10 to all stats and plus 5 splash damage for this dungeon. Uh, yeah. Is the plus 10 stats only for this dungeon as well? Okay. I mean, it looks like it might come in handy, this floor. I don't even know what that is. Let's, let's drag him dragon oh we might we might have to exit we might have to exit yeah we're gonna exit we're not gonna risk it and get some free health here 
I'll take the curse first. Get the free health. What happens when the light shines bright? A world of beauty made anew for us to roam through, me and you. Cheers, mate. Um, I don't know that the health really helped us because we took the curse and that had a negative impact. Heal. Spend all souls. For every 30 souls, gain one to a random stat. We don't need that right now, but that might come in handy in a bit. Um, so we'll take that now. We can parry the heck out of these guys. What have you got? Oh, we can just we can just destroy most people in this dungeon. Hopefully, we can uh, regain some of this health in a second. We can. We'll take that to spend... <gasps> Look at the souls we've got! For every 30 souls, gain plus one to a random stat. All right. Or we can take this chest. Hmm. We're going to do that. Do we want to attack targets and randomly teleport them, though? We haven't got a gem yet, so... But we can deal 81 damage to somebody. Let's move on. Floor 15! <clears throat> So what have we got there? Reveal all cards. Afflict. Attacks inflict a random status effect. We don't need that. I'm going to take you out before I do anything else. We'll drag you. Some explosions going off here. Oh, we can't get past you. We'll let you explode as well. Ooh, I'm scared. You're frozen. Let's see if we can get him to blow. <gasps> Need to heal quickly. What are you? A fire breed? Oh, I've panicked. I've panicked. I've panicked. Oh, that worked out all right, didn't it? What are you? A plague bearer. You are going to do a massive amount of poison damage. You get to go first, and I barely touch you. Let him blow. You can die. Dear. Can we get past you? We can. We can sneak past some of these, surely. Um, we can go. Sod it. We're not risking it. Okay. We're near the end of the dungeon. I don't know what's happening here. Owl helps me. Beware your guide, a cunning fiend. Helpful, maybe. Or routine. Okay. We don't want that. We'll heal as much as we possibly can. Increased attack. You. You're vulnerable. A large spine back. We're faster than you. We block your damage, I think. Yep. Yeah. 
Oh, sugar. Um, we can't hurt you unless... away from him before he hurts us real bad. What is that? Oh my goodness, what is happening? Ah, cool, cool. Every 30 souls, gain one to a random stat. Fuck it, let's use it. We're still not faster than him. We're still not faster than him. Take these guys out quickly. Can we get you? Can we gack you? Right. What are you going to do if I attack you? My goodness, that, that's the best run. I, I sat here at the beginning of the video and said a run can be done in about 20 minutes and we took an hour, but you know, it was worth it. I thoroughly enjoyed that. That was a great run. Definitely, definitely going to be playing a lot more of this game on uh, YouTube. We do be, get to play a lot more of this game over on Twitch if anybody wants to join us. That is uh, twitch.tv forward slash arsenic underscore candy. We are playing several days a week. The... Um, the chance of finding me there is quite high if you fancy come on over. Um, I can't thank you enough for joining me today. I've had a great time. Um, we are uploading videos pretty much every day of the week. Uh, check back for more uh, Ring of Pain and uh, Caves of Kud and lots of other roguelike adventures. I hope to catch you again on the next episode. I've been Arctic Candy. You've been fantastic. Have a great day now. Take care. Bye-bye.